afternoon, fellow Rotarians and guests. Good afternoon, President Jody. I like hearing that. I really like hearing that. Welcome to the weekly lunch meeting of the Rotary Club of Barry. Things go better when you are here. We will begin the meeting in our traditional fashion with Rotary invocation, O Canada, and a toast to the Queen. Please stand if you're able, remove your hats, and join with me. For good food, for good friends, the opportunity to provide service above self through Rotary, we are thankful. And O Canada, and we do not have a flag today, so we may have a visual here. Larry? O Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all of us command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. To the Queen, please be seated. We do that so well, we should have Rudy or go back further and have Frank Hutchison come out and play the keyboards for us. Apparently, we need it. Here this week is Louise Jones, and I believe I heard you on Zoom, Louise. There you are. Thank you very much. If you do have an announcement, please forward that to Louise for inclusion in our minutes. And a shout out to Tanya for last week's speaking. Thank you very much, Tanya. There was a lot to catch up, and you did a great job with it. I'll now call upon uh, the membership to introduce any guests. I think I have ours covered here. Zoom, do we have any? And I'm gonna pay special attention because this cost me money last week. Do we have any Zoom guests in particular? Paula, are you there? I don't see Paula, so it looks like I'm off to find. Any other guests on Zoom? Nope. Okay. We do have, however, some rotary brass here today. Past Rotary International Director, past District Governor, current aide to RI President Shaker Mehta, fellow Rotarians, ladies and gentlemen, the truly awesome Bryn Stiles. And unfortunately, a tough act to follow uh, for Chris Hummel from the Heronia Club. <laughs> And Anne Marie Kungle, uh, City of Council, or City of Barry Councilor, uh, who is here. And Anne Marie, thank you for the lovely sunflower that you brought that we're going to plant in our garden later on. So, please accept a warm greeting from myself on behalf of the club, and feel free to join with us again. And just an update, folks. Uh, I sent an email out this week dealing with COVID um, and some protocols, and uh, it is what it is. And I thank you for acknowledging that and following that here today. We're going to change things up a little bit, kind of do somewhat like we normally do uh, when we're at South Shore. We're going to actually take 10 minutes here and eat. So uh, our live group here, we're going to have a chance to go up and eat. And I ask you to please wear your masks when you're up there in line. Zoomers will carry on 10 minutes of socializing and we'll flip the screen around to give you a chance to, uh, to catch a little bit of what's going on here. So it's uh, 20 after. We'll reconvene at 1230. So this is our breakout room, our lunchtime, our social time, but uh, let's take a break and eat. All right, so we're back folks. So uh, thanks for that. We're trying something a little old, different. I'm not quite sure you want to call it. So uh, there may be some rain coming here. So we're going to jump right back into things. We can't have Bryn Stiles come visit us today without having Bryn come forward and share a little bit about his uh, pretty amazing connection that he has at the very top of Rotary with this year's president, Shaker Mehta. So Bryn, if you would come forward a little bit, please. Thanks, uh, President Jody, and thank you for that totally obnoxious introduction. <laughs> it's probably one of the worst I think I've heard, but anyway, um, it, it, It's great to be here and uh, to see so many familiar faces, and I congratulate your club for being able to get together like this. This is the first 
Rotary Club meeting I've been to in over 18 months, I think. So, uh, you know, we can meet together on Zoom, but there's nothing like getting together in person. So Jody wanted me to talk a little bit about um, what's happening at Rotary International. Rotary has been very cautious um, through COVID uh, with travel and, and everything like that. When Shaker Mehta, the current president of Rotary, was selected in August of 2019. And he's, uh, there's a, a waiting period to make sure there's no challenges. So in October of 2019, he became the president nominee and he selects three key positions at that point. He selects the chair of the, of the convention, which is gonna be in Houston next year. He selects the moderator for what's called of the International Assembly, where we train our district governors. And he selects an aide to be his aide. And that, was, that is my current role. And the aide to the RI president is sort of like the chief of staff. Everything that kind of goes on in Rotary comes through myself and the staff at Rotary and Shaker uh, looks at what we're doing. He starts his planning in, a, in October of 2019. So in October 2019, Randy and I, my wife and I went to Chicago and started to work with Shaker on his plans for his year as president. Assembly again in San Diego. And then, of course, as we all know, COVID struck. Since that time, from January, March 2020, right through till now, everything has been done on Zoom or on online platforms, but mainly Zoom. And so you can imagine the number of meetings that happen. Shaker lives in India, so you have to take into account time zones. He's currently nine and a half hours ahead of what we are. The interesting thing I found out is that India is a large country. They have one time zone to cover that whole country, which I found just amazing. And then it's like Newfoundland, it's a half hour off from the rest of the world. Yeah. So it, it, it's been really fascinating. Um, everything was, is in place. We've now started at Shaker's year as president. And now it's sort of like when you're the district governor or the club president, you do your planning. And then hopefully all your planning that you've been done has been done is implemented by the Rotary members. And we're still restricted on travel. Um, there's no non-essential travel. And that is in effect until I think December. And then we will address it again. So Rotary is being very cautious on the travel. COVID or uh, Shaker is going to be doing some travel. Unfortunately, Shaker has had a very rough go with his family being in India. In the course of 20 months, he lost his father, not due to COVID, other reasons, but his mother and Rashi, his wife's mother, Shaker's mother-in-law, both passed away from COVID. Shaker was double vaccinated, and 10 days after his second vaccination, he ended up in hospital for two weeks on oxygen. So it's just been, it, the, the trials and tribulations have been uh, quite extensive, but uh, we're ready to go. And then, so Shaker's president this year, and I think you're all aware that next year, the president of Rotary International is going to be Jennifer Jones from Canada. And uh, she, she'll be a great add-on to that. And then the year after that, they've already selected the president for 23, 24, I have to get the years right. And it will be Gordon McAnally from Scotland. And Gordon was the chair of the Toronto convention a few years ago and he's just a wonderful individual so you can see rotary does this long range planning as well so it's great to be here jody i don't know if there's time for questions probably not if the game's coming in does anybody have a question that i'd like to ask Bryn? no no That's great thank you great to be here or if you don't count or my friend we'll wait and see Bryn, thank you for that and and it really is uh awesome what you continue to do with Rotary, the connection you have, the commitment you have, and to think that here we are in little old Barry, and we're right tight to the president of Rotary, that's pretty amazing. And we certainly, our club has a long history with the district. We've got a fantastic uh, participation at district level right now. And Grant, if I recall in the uh, in Shaker's introduction video, he's a vegetarian. And I know that he's coming to Canada, I believe Ontario later this year, 
what better spot to have him visit? Just saying, just saying, but our garden might be on the agenda. Uh, let's throw out some other announcements here. So on the topic of garden, uh, Chris Van Nieker. Where are you, Chris? Yeah, come on up, Chris, please. And uh, I showed our Zoomers some vegetables that we have here. We're going to talk about these in a minute and something we can do, but Chris is going to give us a bit of an update on the garden and uh, a fundraiser coming. Chris? All right, thanks, uh, President Jody. Can everyone hear me this time okay? Yeah, louder? Okay, I'll try. Uh, hello, everyone, and uh, speaking from on behalf of our little garden committee, uh, the first thing I want to say is uh, I know Jody, President Jody introduced her already, and Marie Kungo. Uh, she's a city councillor and she's part of Barrier Urban Gardeners. And uh, she's generously donated this sunflower here uh, from the Janice Lakin Community Garden. Uh, that garden was really critical in helping us get started here. And I just wanted to really extend a thank you to Anne Marie for, uh, for the, the sunflower. So thank you. After the meeting, we're gonna we're gonna plant the sunflower. So um, now Bernie still made an announcement last week, and uh, before I get into that part of it, I just thought I'd uh, let you know where we are with the garden. Uh, so the zucchini continue to produce. You can see down here, we've got a, a bunch of zucchini. I got I got to think we harvested, you know, about a hundred since we started, and some really massive ones. Uh, the beans and the peas were finished with them. We got a good harvest from the peas, or sorry, from the beans. Uh, we've dug them up so it's nice and clean over here now. Uh, the tomatoes, you can see those, those are just exploding right now. We can almost pick them daily. Uh, Ruta bagger looking really good. The beets are looking really good if, if it weren't for the deer that are picking away at them. Uh, the squash are growing really nicely and those are the ones that were donated from Nicklin Farms for the most part. Uh, onions are looking really nice. They're, they're sitting on top of the ground. The roots are in the ground, the onions sit on top and uh, we're not far off from pulling a few of those. Um, John and I were here picking this morning. You can see this box of goodies here. We're happy to sell these out to the club if anyone's interested. Proceeds are going to be saved by the club and later donated to some of the food agencies that we're uh, providing our harvest to. Uh, so let me know if anybody's interested in purchasing some of the, the, the goods that we have here. Uh, so it brings me back to our potatoes here and Bernie's announcement from last week. And, you can see over here, I don't know, Jody, if you want to swing the... Yeah, so I've shown them already. Oh, okay. Different signs. So we've got some signs up here. What we've done is we put names on the potato plants. Uh, so I'll read them out here. We're trying to have some fun with it. Uh, we've got Spudicus, Potato, Spuddy Buddy, Edgar Allen Potato, Arnold Spudzenegger, Darth Tater, and we have one tomato plant in the back there. It's way back there named Saucy Ragu. Um, President Jody is going to speak about uh, what we'd like to do here. But like I said, we want to have some fun. We're going to be picking these in a few weeks time and uh, probably toward the end of August. And uh, we're hoping that uh, we can have a bit of a silent auction and sort out maybe the best way of uh, how we can maybe raise some funds for, uh, for the food banks that we're helping, the agencies that we're helping. So I thought I'd flip it back to President Jody who's going to wrap it up. Thanks, Chris. That's fantastic work. What continues here at the garden. So, what we thought we would do instead of doing our random number auction, which, in spite of the brilliant efforts of our sergeant at arms and yours truly, doesn't work so well with with Zoom. So, President Deb has agreed to take on this role. So, it's going to be a silent auction to bid on the six um, plants that we have. So, up until midnight tomorrow night, if you wish to bid on buying one of those plants, email past president Deb, your bid could be five bucks, could be 500 bucks, whatever you wish. The top six people, uh, Deb will tabulate that and we'll announce those out in an email next week. So if you'd like to buy one of the vines, one of the plants, send how much you're willing to contribute to president Deb and she will look after that for us. And thank you for doing that uh, past president Deb. Chris, thank you. Uh, and again, for the box load of vegetables that are here, what we thought, if you want some of these vegetables today, throw in whatever you want, two bucks, five bucks, take what you want. Um, the money will go to what we're, as Chris said, what we're gathering and raising with that. Uh, also on the topic of food, our first lady fundraiser. So just as an update, the eggs that we've been giving away uh, and selling, I should say, we've generated almost $800 so far. So thank you to the club for supporting that. That's pretty cool. Uh, we have the 
farm fresh frozen free range chickens uh, that will be available very shortly on our marketplace. Uh, so David uh, Solpich is putting that together. And uh, to be fair, I've asked David's team a very difficult timeline and they're, they're working with that uh, in spite of uh, uh, how challenging it is. But you'll be able to go onto our marketplace. We have a limited number of chickens in various weights. I think five, six, seven, and eight pounds. Uh, it's 650 a pound. Um, Paula talked a couple of weeks ago. These are some fantastic chickens. So uh, the club profits 250 a pound. So if we sell out what we have, I think we can generate another $300 profit. So you'll be able to go on to our marketplace in a few days. I'll let you know, order the chickens. They'll be delivered and picked up at my office. So that part is coming. Thank you. Um, and then just a, a small message I have to the club here. And, and again, it's a positive message, but um, I just want to throw some support to our directors. Our directors are working hard to, in particular, this meeting here, um, there's a lot that goes into this. It doesn't seem like it. At 9.30 in the morning, we make the call. Are we going to be here? Are we going to be live? And we've got to get people to come and pick this stuff up. So um, I know our directors are working hard to schedule people. David Fish has done fantastic work uh, organizing the meetings, sending out the request, Betty Ann on attendance. And I guess I'm just very nicely asking the club, if you're asked to, to help with this, we need, we need help. We need some people. Uh, Pete Lormer on short notice today came to my office, picked all this stuff up. So uh, if your directors reach out, please do what you can to help them. It, it's needed and it's very much appreciated. So that's all with that. Uh, let's get to some birthday greetings uh, and some anniversaries. So uh, Taylor Curry uh, is celebrating a birthday on August 14th. Sue Barnes celebrating a birthday August 19th. And Kelly Rod also August 19th. Some anniversaries, Ron and Sharon Dennis, 17 years on August 13th. John and Sarah Ingram, celebrating 10 years, August 13th. David and Cheryl Porter, celebrating 25 years. There's that silver anniversary again, David, uh, August 17th. And Todd and Sandy Tucky, celebrating three years on August 18th. And a really cool club anniversary, uh, Ken Firth is celebrating 44 years in our club uh, on August 18th. So congratulations to everybody and a donation to our club's Polio Plus eradication campaign will be made in your name. And Jeff, if you have a song for us, are, you, are we playing it or we'll just sing it again because we do that so well. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear fellas. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. I can't really complain about that because for years I've sat at the back of the room and saying, row, row, row your boat when we've done that. So that's probably fair payback, isn't it? Let's move on to something funny here because I'm failing in that uh, category. Sergeant at Arms, Larry. Good afternoon, Pelikikina Jody and my glorious fellow Rotarians and guests. And today's greeting comes from Hawaii. I am fluent in every language. Now, Is President- that American? No. Isn't Hawaii an American? Shh, hush, 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 hush. Pardon? President Jody, hush, 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 <laughs> Okay, hush. that's better. Um, President Jody, earlier you said we're gonna, we're gonna try something old and different. And I presume by that that you meant that we were gonna talk to past presidents Rob and Don over here because they're both old and both different. But- <laughs> Who are you asking for? I'm here. Oh, no, I was just making a point that it's good to see these gentlemen. There's no fine involved. I, I would hope not. I, I think we're honored to have uh, former presidents Rob Hamilton and David Glenn, Karen, and Don Pratt here. I don't know what we did to deserve that. I begged, I pleaded. They must, I got tired of my emails and phone calls, I guess. But all three old and different. And thank you very much for being here. He said that, thank not you. me. <laughs> now, President Jody, you talked about the, you can buy a chicken online. Now, I've always been the kind of guy who likes to have a pet chicken around the house, but I'm not sure about the bylaws in Barrie. Do you have to have a chicken poop if it's just like a house chicken? I, I, I don't know where to go with that, but we do have somebody that may be able to give us that answer right over there. Is it frozen? 
<laughs> it's 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 cool. It's ice cool. In fact. What are the laws around? What are the bylaws around around chickens as pets? Do you know? Oh well, um, don't tell your neighbors you have them if you have them. Uh, because, well, and good news, uh, President Jody. I'm not sure if you heard, but I'm hoping we can actually launch a backyard hen pilot soon. All right. So stay tuned. But until then, keep your chickens frozen in the freezer. We will follow the bylaws. We will not run afoul of them. Good one. Now, I understand, I understand that your sergeant at arms tried for an entire year to find you. Oh yeah, President Jody, when he was sergeant at arms, he went relentless, just going at me, going at me. Not once did he get me fined. Now, did you notice last week, uh, were you on the meeting last week or did you see the video? I saw the video. Okay, so you saw that President Jody did get, or Pelikikena Jody, did get a $10 <laughs> fine. Yes, I did. All right. Yeah, it looks good on it. So is that a matter of you having a less functional sergeant at arms or you being a more stoic and ungiving president? Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> if, if I may, Sergeant Arms Larry and past President Chris, you will always be my president. There were so many things you did wrong in your year that I had to keep bringing those <laughs> signs forward. And I was just trying to square up and be honest in front of the club, and it never happened. And wisely, you never find uh, yourself. Oh, of course not. I failed last failed. week you substantially did. with that. But the it's tape. Tradition, Jody. It is tradition, and I honor that tradition, but I don't care anymore because I have this, and it allows me <laughs> to fine you $10 because? because? Yes. <laughs> well, you know, and, and I knew this day was coming. I knew this day was coming, and it won't be only today. I'm sure of that. The number of times that Jody, let's call it backfired, uh, was so many, but... Uh, you mean President Jody? Oh, back then. then. I'm, I'm back square there. Back okay. Then. Yeah, but I have addressed it. It's a record. Yeah. yeah. If I can interject, this would be so much easier for Zoom. It's the person took their hand off the camera. I believe that. Um, I do I, believe I, that. Then, I got an idea. Sorry, Dave. I got an idea. President Jody, <laughs> we'll go to the high Supreme Court. <laughs> that happened to me once. I think I'm losing this one again, aren't I? Where are you going with this, Chris? Would you have the esteemed chief of staff, oh glorious leader of Rotary International, the great big huge Bryn Styles, ladies and gentlemen? Oh my God! This is my last visit. Put your hand back. On. <laughs> okay, no. Okay, now as I understand, when you were president, Jody was sergeant at arms. Correct. And. He tried to find you and never worked. Never worked. So he wasn't adequate. <laughs> he was completely <laughs> inadequate. And then last week, he got fined by the sergeant at arms. And as I understand it, was... Correction, if I may, it was not introducing my girlfriend and I was fined. Almost worse. <laughs> oh, man. I, I think there's some. <laughs> <laughs> she's okay. online now everything's good jody i think you've carried this for far too long it's time to let it go you feel besmirched <laughs> that you. you were not able to find chris i think to bring this up again another ten dollar fine for jody, to jody. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know why i thought this was going to turn out different i'll have to look up what besmirched means <laughs> Shock of no shocks, I lose again, Chris. <laughs> okay, really quickly, because you know I like to celebrate the special days that are. Can everybody stand up, please, if you're able? Okay, if you do not have an older sibling, sit down. Alive or ever? Ever. If you do not also have a younger sibling, sit down. All right, so today, today is National Middle Child Day. So everybody that's a middle child, pay two bucks. <laughs> and lastly, but not certainly not least,
All right, can you do a synopsis for it in the, uh, maybe you more late into the meeting? No, no, no. Tother side, my friend. You don't like it? <laughs> Sergeant in Arms, you don't like it? I love it. I was doing my do, uh, my duty, Sergeant in Arms. President of protecting Jordan, my neighbor. About the, uh, the rules around advertising, one let me, business. Let me just, let me just help with that a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see, oh, wait a minute. I do see some advertising. Oh. You know what? I'm going to stay up here. You make your call on this one, Lars. All right. All right. So just um, don't let him have the microphone. Okay. No, he doesn't get the microphone, <laughs> but he, he does get to pay $2 for not addressing the chair, probably, I think. I pay you. Yeah, I'm not the chair. Um, no, 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 but you were talking to me. Yeah. No, no. Okay. Um, two bucks for showing up late and two bucks for the advertiser. Yeah. May, may I? Um, no. no. Well, listen, I, I have a red dot here on my badge, uh, President. Oh. oh. I, see that far, uh. I have a red dot on my badge there, uh, President Jody. Yeah, he's got a red dot. Uh, and, and so, I'm not the keeper of the badges, uh, President Jody, but. I was going to say, I think yeah. Past President it's Jeb done. made an announcement about people are responsible for their own housekeeping. I'm confident we have precedent along those lines. Yeah. Oh. Is there a lawyer in the house? <laughs> Another $10. Is there a one? <laughs> All right. Like, pay it or we keep rolling, Arf. What's your deal? I didn't hear you the question, sir. Pay it or we keep rolling. Oh, you go. That's oh, keep going. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Um, so, Mallory and Rory, also, you were late getting to the meeting, so I suggest a couple dollars in the uh, in the cup up here toward the end of the meeting. You're offended? Okay. By What's something. That? You got a minute there, Sergeant and Arms Larry. Yeah. All right, you address the chair. I heard that we're raising money for the First Lady fundraiser, fundraiser yeah. by selling eggs and chickens. Really? Is that appropriate? What came first? I'm not sure I'm going with this one. Is it a female thing? It's a food thing, Mal. <laughs> can we sell? Can we sell? For wasting our time. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the end of Sergeant at Arms for today. Thank you, everybody. Larry, and thanks for the help, Jay. And at this point in time, I would like to call up uh, Rob Hamilton to introduce today's speaker, which is our own Doug Jerk. Rob? Thank you, President uh, Jody, past District Governor Bren. Did I say fellow Rotarians? I heard you say fellow. Can you say fellow Rotarians? I'm already under the bus, so it doesn't matter to me. But it's too late for me. Save yourself, Jody. I, I worry about you. And you have my my very sincere, you and past President Deb, admiration. Being the president of a Rotary Club, especially this Rotary Club, is a big job. And these circumstances can't make it any easier. So you're answering the bell and you're bringing your creativity to make chicken salad out of the other chicken stuff, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so congratulations, you, we, we, we need you. Doug Jura is gonna tell you about himself. I'm gonna tell you how we met and why I thought Doug Jura would be a good fit for Rotary. Uh, I'll tell you one thing, when he commits to something, he's all in, he, uh, he, he's willing and he's capable and he attends the meetings and he does the work. I had a brief tenure at City Hall uh, from 2003 to 2006, quite un undistinguished and un uh, not memorable. But there were five issues that were very obvious to me. Uh, one was the airport was not an economic driver for our region. You want to bring a business, they say, where can we land the corporate jet? Pearson. Now you can land your corporate jet in Barrie. So that brings a lot of business that is maybe not readily apparent. We needed to extend the runway, parallel taxiway, perimeter fence, uh, better instrumentation, and 24-7 custom service. The Georgian College, we want to bring businesses to town. Workforce, meet Brian Tamlin then at Georgian College. They'll put whatever programs in place that you're going to need, and we'll cover that base for you. Uh, business is coming to town. First question, can my employees get a family doctor? Then it was 25,000 people in Barrie did not have a family doctor. Um, the, the hospital, also the shortage of family docs, also Stu Murdoch, you know Stu Murdoch, a, a physician in town. He was instrumental in establishing a residency program 
with the University of Toronto uh, to, to have a two-year residence program for family medicine. So now we have nine doctors in first year, nine doctors in second year, nine are graduated every year. And if a doctor has a 3,000 person patient list, nine threes or whatever they are, you pretty soon cover the 25,000 that don't have family docs. So we answer that question. We had no cancer care here. You had to go to Princess Margaret for the oncology, chemo, radiation, et cetera, et cetera. And um, the, uh, the cardiac, you had to go to Newmarket for a stent and that kind of stuff. So we had a new hospital, but we needed to expand it. So that was something, it was approved by the province. We needed to get into the fundraising and uh, do what we needed to do to make it happen. We couldn't get a construction date to start. So the, the city of Barrie had to lead the way because if you, it's a, a Simcoe Muskoka Regional Hospital. So you're gonna go to Huntsville, Bracebridge, Gravenist, Aurelia, uh, Elmville, uh, Innisfil for funding. Uh, then you got to set the tone in the city of Barrie and we gave $52.5 million right up front to visit by Dave Blencairn and uh, Janice Scott to City Hall. And um, the, the province will only pay for the building. They won't pay for the equipment. So the equipment's gotta be funded you know, by us. So you, you want a man uh, to do the job. That man is Dave Blencarn. Oh, I didn't know he was gonna be here, but he is past president of our club. He headed up the fundraising, fundraising efforts for the expansion of the hospital. And they he, Dave and his forces raised $35 million. And, uh, you know, that was a big step forward to getting the equipment part. Okay, construction uh, date. Now the annexation of Innisfil was the other uh, big uh, item that was, you know, on the books, going nowhere and bringing the ghost service uh, to Barrie. Now John Laking's not here, but his mom, Janice Laking, was a pre uh, mayor of Barrie for about 12 years and a councillor prior to that. And she had the foresight that when the CN decommissioned the rail line, north of Bradford, she bought it and Barry owned it from Bradford to Barry. Then she bought the rail line that was in the city of Barry around the lake. And now you have these uh, uh, trails, walking trails, biking trails, etc. She bought it right to the border with Oro and she wouldn't sell any of it to the neighbors who wanted to buy their section so they had access to the water because the rail line always separated their properties. So now it's, it's there for uh, public, public use. Um, so that was the the goal service uh, that we needed. So we're talking about the goal, dealing with the bureaucrats, we were getting nowhere to strike a deal. They wouldn't give us proper compensation for the rail line, which we own. And bringing go here is an expensive proposition and you got to pony up uh, some of the money. There's absolutely no sense of urgency by bureaucrats. So they were taking their time. So I went to local liberals and said, okay, we got to get a meeting with somebody at Queens Park Liberal government, Dalton McGinty, who gets things done. So the meeting was called. It was at the Jolly Miller Tavern in Hogs Hollow. And many a beer I've walked in that joint. So I was very comfortable uh, <laughs> going to a pub. And at that meeting was Doug Fuhrer. And that's the first time I met him. He came with a guy named David G, who was from the Premier's office, but with no title. And David Jean was the guy. So David Jean's job was to get Dalton McGinty re-elected. He said, David, uh, Mr. Jean, to call me David. David, um, you know, we can get, you, you can win the riding in Barry. okay? We kind of, we have a conservative member who is beatable. Put in a good uh, candidate, name recognition, you can win. And we need the go service. So he's listening and, uh, then the rest of that story is enter Eileen Carroll, who has been announced uh, federally by Patrick Brown and was here and was available. So she ran and she got elected. So we we got that part done. So what did, um, uh, so Doug had come on the coattails of, of David Jean with the government people. He, uh, he lived in Barry, so that's why they, and he and David Jean worked quite closely together at, at Queens Park. So the next meeting that we had with the Ministry of Transport, the GO people in Toronto, we saw a whole different people that we'd never seen before. We weren't dealing with bureaucrats anymore. We were dealing with Dave Jean's people and the Premier, David Jean, they have moles in every uh, ministry. 
so they know what's going on, what the bureaucrats are doing. You learn very quickly in politics, the bureaucrats circle the wagons, you're dead in the water, you can't get anything done. He says, you wait, you out. Um, so we met with new people, and there was a sense of urgency, and we we're gonna get it done in two weeks, we had the deal. Um, and now we have go, and we, it was a good deal. We got good compensation for the rail lines, uh, what we were bringing to the table. Um, hospital expansion, couldn't get a start date, and the annexation was stalled as well. So we had a meeting in Jamie Mass's boardroom in his building on Bayfield Street, there were 10 or 12 business people there. And uh, what do we do? So Stan Sinton says, well, here's what you do. Stan Sinton, Sinton Bus Lines, member of this club, um, passed away from cancer <clears throat> early. Uh, so Stan, Stan says, well, you got to throw a dinner. You raise $100,000, you have, have it at somebody's house, so it's very personable. And you invite the premier and you know you sell tickets $5,000 a piece. Okay, and so the meeting sort of came to an end and there was nothing concrete done. So Doug and I are standing on the sidewalk um, on Bayfield Street. And I said, Doug, you know, we gotta do this. He said, well, yeah, I agree. I said, okay, can you deliver the premier? He said, yes, I can. And I said, okay, I'll raise the money. So 5,000 bucks, 20 people at 5,000 a head. <laughs> How many phone calls do you think I make? 20? Who <laughs> knew? 18. <clears throat> um, nobody said no. Two guys took two. One of them invited John Babula, the CAO of the city. The other one invited the president of RVH and still president Janice Scott. Now we have we need a venue. So I go to uh, uh, Sandy McDonald, beautiful house on the lake. I say, Sandy, we got this date. We got the premier. I need your house. To throw this dinner. There will be you know twenty people who are ticket holders, and then there will be you know a few government. There will be some other ministers. And we have all of their And uh, he said, okay, that's the day that's going to be Oh, sorry, Rob. Um, I already have something else going on on that date. So I told Doug, I said, Doug, okay, we've got the money, we've got the premier, we haven't got a venue. What, what are we going to do? I said, how big is your house? It's not big enough. So the next morning, I get a call uh, from Sandy McDonald. He said, Rob, I have rescheduled what I had on. The house is yours. Perfect. So the... Um, the, uh, we, I said, let's set it up. Then we figured it out. I sitting around the table where you got the person on your left, the person on your right. After five minutes, you're tired of talking to them. So I so said, we got to have a mix and mingle for about an hour and a half. These 20 people all get five minutes space time with the premier one on one in We're kind of wrapping it up, and I said, Mr. Premier, um, a lot of these people in here are conservatives. And they all want to postdate their checks, but I reassure you, I didn't accept any postdated checks. They've all paid up. So that part has been looked after. And he said a few words, uh, you know, spoke very, very well, and he was leaving. So now at the front door, there were some local politicians and, and the uh, the, the federal Eileen was here and whoever else we had in the area at Queens Park then. And of course, they're mingling at the front door, getting as close to Premier McGinley as they can get for a photo op or whatever to be noticed. I saw this happening. Sandy McDonald was already out in his driveway at the front door. So I went out through the laundry room so I didn't have to beat my way through the crowd at the door. And I'm out there with Sandy, out comes the Premier. It's just the three of us on, on the steps. And he's got his OPT guys, of course, about five of them, two big black SUVs that he came up in. And Sandy McDonald, in 45 seconds, some things up. Sandy McDonald's the cardiac, the vascular surgeon in, in town. He said, Mr. Premier, my coverage is Peterborough, North Bay, um, Sudbury, uh, Bradford, you know, Owen Sound type of thing. So I can do the work, but I can't get the hospital done. And uh, um, 
Mr. Uh, Mr. Premier, Premier McGinty says, well, what do you mean? He says, you can't get the hospital time because two operating theaters, I think we had seven, five were open, two are closed. And he said there were 26 beds in the hospital that are closed. And Premier McGinty says, really? He said, well, when they tour me through the hospital, they don't tour me through the parts that are closed. And he said, I'll do something about that. So as soon as the vehicle's off, he goes, we all sit down and have dinner, very leisurely dinner. We still had these three um, ministers there. So it was, it, it, it worked. So I said to Doug, I said, okay, when do we get the start date for the hospital expansion? And when is the annexation going to go through? He says, wow, he says, the premier can't go down the highway with a bag full of money and, and you're going to get your answers next week. I said, well, how long is it going to take? Anyway, within a year, all of those things happened. We got the start date for the hospital and we annexed the lands in Innisville. It was a hot, hot political topic, but we needed it. There was no land in Barrie for further building and, and development and housing, et cetera. Now, what was it? 5,300 acres, 5,300 acres that we annexed approximately. Um, okay, that's that's the story. That's how I met Doug. So he, he was he, he, he was very instrumental in all of those things happening. Um, you know, as a volunteer, he wasn't getting paid, but asked him to do the job. He did the job. Doug Dewar. Uh, I prepared him. I said I'd be 10 or 12 minutes. Well, and I, okay, yeah. half the rotary club. <laughs> 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 the next Mom, time you're under the bus, you're flathead. They're just going to be now. <laughs> Use the past president as an example. You got it. All right. Uh, Douglas, the floor is yours. Oh, finally. Thank you. <laughs> uh, that, that was a nice intro. Yep. Yeah, it's my turn. Okay. Uh, I, I, you can see right away that uh, a successful lobbyist is invisible. Okay. okay. Uh, let me uh, just start off by uh, giving you a bit of background. Uh, Rob suggested I do this, and I'll be brief. Uh, I was uh, born in Yellowknife, Northwest Territories, on December 25th, 1949. My father was the chief geologist. For what is what's your stuff? Here? Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. After Rob, he's still here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, he was the chief geologist for Cominco Mines, and we ended up uh, moving to Toronto, and uh, then down to uh, a place called Rams, New Jersey, in northeastern uh, United States. Dad worked in Manhattan. And he was continually frustrated that uh, I was absolutely never interested in minerals, let alone rocks. Uh, he was hoping. A little louder. Oh, okay. That uh, that broke my rhythm. The, uh, uh, the the decision to come back to Toronto was based on two things. When my mother attended a PTA meeting in high school, and uh, I led the pledge allegiance to the flag. And then secondly, it was the draft for the Vietnam War, which dad was not going to have to uh, uh, be drafted for. And the uh, result was, came back to Toronto. I finished high school. I went to York University, got a uh, degree in poli-sci, minoring in, uh, in history. And uh, I, right after that, I joined uh, the Ontario government as a political assistant, having worked in the Bill Davis's first provincial election campaign. And uh, I joined political staff, the ministry at that time of industry and trade as the minister's uh, administrative assistant. I was in charge of uh, briefing him on the daily question period and also dealing with his constituency affairs. So after a couple of years of doing that, I was offered an opportunity to uh, uh, join the civil service. And uh, some eight years later, I was appointed the government senior representative in Tokyo responsible for industry and trade. And uh, in my work in the Ontario government, I, I am familiar with Simcoe County. Uh, I worked with uh, Boyd Robinson when he was the uh, president of the Herodia Tourist Association, the, the best local tourist association in Ontario. 
And uh, then uh, when I was in Tokyo, uh, we were responsible for finding a buyer for the RCA Midland Picture Tube plant, which you remember that it was sold by RCA. And we found that uh, Mitsubishi Electric purchased it. But the other significant one is that we landed a Honda in Alliston. And so I'm quite familiar with what goes on here. And I just uh, wanted you to know that there is some relevance to my background and my being here in Rotary. <laughs> the, uh, after 20 years of pretty exciting and interesting work in the Ontario government and far too many years with Bob Ray, I left. I joined a, uh, what we all do, uh, left uh, to join a public affairs firm. And uh, after two years of learning what the business is about and how to build clients, I set up my own company, Douglas Juror and Associates. And the associates are essentially the ability to get together with other individuals uh, where talent is required for certain projects. And over the years, my, uh, I'm still working, over the years, uh, my clients have included uh, mainly manufacturing companies, uh, community colleges, uh, developers, and municipalities. And uh, my only, my only government uh, uh, contract, unlike a lot of lobbyists, was a, a brief contract for a project with the Royal Ontario Museum. So I'm very private sector oriented, and uh, the job is to help the private sector resolve their issues with government and God knows they're all they're there all the time. Now I, I think I'm listed as a, a public affairs consultant. It may the same thing as a government affairs consultant, but what it is, it's lobby. When I have to explain to people what I do, I say I'm a lobbyist. And sort of like if you sell used cars, people start to back away and wonder what the hell you do. But uh, lobbyists do play a role, an important role, uh, particularly with the private sector that has a hesitation to properly deal with government, uh, not only the politicians, but the pure bureaucrats who are the people that make the public policy and they're the guys that write the minister's briefing list. So it's twofold, politicians and bureaucrats. And having been a bureaucrat, it was very useful uh, because intuitively, you know what, what was going on with the machines of government when the machines were working. Now, the term uh, lobbyist comes from the United States. It's not a Canadian uh, term. It's an American term. And it goes back to Ulysses S. Grant when he was president. And the, uh, what his complaint was that any time he went to the Willard Hotel, which was just up from the White House, he was confronted with lobbyists wanting to buy him a drink and influence him with respect to the policy of the day. So that term lobbyist, and I can tell you, uh, I don't stand around in lobbies waiting for politicians and offer them drinks. Uh, the, you know, I do go to fundraising receptions and uh, where everybody's drinking. And we do know, you know, at times donate to the party like everybody else does. But really what I do is I spend a lot of time sitting in government offices, receptions area, waiting for ministers and bureaucrats. So, you know, the glory is really having a hard ass to sit through this. <laughs> now, I know I'm running out of time, Oh, I'm okay. All right. Certainly earned it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rob's still laughing. The uh, uh, right now, and I'm surprised he hasn't done it yet, is the prime minister will call the federal election, federal election, and it's probably a good time to talk to you about politics, how to help you through not only this fall federal election, but the provincial election on June second, and then finally in October. The municipal election here at Barry, and uh, uh, the I think there's some key points just to remember. Now the polls right now, and I'm saying the polls, not just one poll, but the polls are saying that it's either going to be a slim liberal majority or it's 
going to be a strong liberal minority. Now, the liberals traditionally, and they're doing it right now, are counting on four things, four places. Ontario, where the party, the liberal party, has commanded for the last almost six months, almost a 10 point lead over the conservatives. The same thing is going on in Quebec. And you've probably seen all the announcements about childcare and that kind of thing. That is making the premier of Quebec very happy. And if the premier of Quebec is very happy, the liberals are very happy. Then you've got the Atlantic Canada provinces, which there'll be a bit of a toss up, but a majority of those seats will go for uh, the liberals. And that leaves uh, British Columbia, which right now is a, always a three-way race that includes the NDP. But right now, the Liberals are edging out. But we have to wait and see how Mr. Singh does as, as, as uh, leader of the party, how his party works. So there you go. Uh, that's why you're heading at the least optimistic to a slim uh, majority or a very narrow uh, minority government. Now, the problem that the Conservatives have, so when you look at these numbers and the polls will start coming up, you look at the national numbers. The thing to remember is that as they did last time with Shearer, the Tories rack up all kinds of popular support in the Prairie provinces, but they can only deliver so many seats. And that's what happened last time. So those national polls are not really the ones to watch. It's what's happening in Ontario, Quebec, Atlantic Canada, and then BC. Now here in uh, Ontario, the, uh, uh, the issue right now is evolving as to whether Doug Ford is going to uh, actually help Aaron O'Toole. And yet again, uh, the uh, premier is caught in the debate about the sufficiency of his tax of the law. And uh, it has dragged down his approval rating. And the last poll out showed that the Tory support uh, is under a lot of pressure. But the issue now is the But the other thing too is uh, this is a six percent federal election coming up. That means all parties are aiming at the ridings that they lost by six percent. Now, when you look at the two Barry ridings, uh, there is absolutely no chance that there will be a turnover in Barry Innisfil. But the uh, uh, Barry, get this straight. Very spring water, not secure, but not a secure right. So when you take a look at what's going on around us, because I don't think you have to really worry about what's going on here, uh, it's to look at the issues riding by riding, or uh, the fully riding by riding. Now, the uh, last thing I would say, I'd be pleased to. Uh, Answer any questions because you're very attentive to this. Maybe shock me, it's up to you. But uh, politici uh, politics can be an honorable profession. It can. Some people are driven to become politicians because of their ego, they want to make a name for themselves. And then other individuals who become politicians actually want to do something. Uh, they're increasingly rare to see before us, but they're there. Um, I mentioned earlier that Tim Burton and uh, his passing has, has represented the passing of the era. He, uh, he espoused and he delivered on a sense of public service. He, uh, he was a pragmatist. He wasn't an ideologue. He wasn't a uh, populist. He was a competitor. He clearly was a competitor. He wouldn't win all those elections if he had to. But he is uh, a competitor who works with his competitors.
competitors, which is something we don't see now at all. And he's a politician who could compromise. And he did compromise, particularly in social services areas. But he never compromised himself. So remember, the government is what we are. The government is us. And when it comes to make your choice, and I hope everybody does make their choice, just be sure you know who you're voting for. Thank you, President. Well, we do have a few minutes. Do we have any questions? I'm not going to hear anything you said at all, but uh, <laughs> I did hear Hammy for about an hour. Um, Jake, I just got a question about the new third party rules and uh, what your opinion is on those. Uh, the use of the notwithstanding. Yeah. Uh, I think that that I think is egregious. Uh, he uh, Ford. That's the second. Well, the first time he wanted to use it to interfere in a municipal election in Toronto, already underway. Yeah. Okay, but he didn't have supports uh, 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 supported it. Uh, but uh, he has. And, and, the Tories all know it, Tim Hudak knew it. It's the labor unions that put the big money in yep. to go after him. And, and, Ted, and uh, uh, Tim Hudak, they were pretty young when they went after him. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that all of us should have the right to participate in an election campaign. People, and you must deal with it, Paul, sure. people want to be heard, but they don't always know how to do it, how to effectively communicate how to get into the debate. And this decision, I think, is reprehensible. And it does, in my opinion, uh, represent a threat to what we traditionally, as Canadians, know to be free and reasonable speech. Right. Thanks. Yep. Anybody else? Oh, if I could ask Rory Quinn to come forward to thank you, Doug, on behalf of the club. Thanks, Rory. <laughs> So in the spirit of time, I will be a little shorter than the, uh, the intro. Yeah, please. Um, the uh, classification I've always known to be some of the best talks here in Rotary. Thank you so much uh, today on behalf of the club, Doug, for, uh, for sharing your story. Um, you know, I think it speaks to the character of the Rotary Club of Barry and, you know, all the dynamic members that, that make up the club. Um, I know that uh, with limited interactions uh, throughout I always recall when the U.S. election was going on and we were, we were leaving a meeting at the South Shore Centre and uh, you mentioned to me uh, a woman by the name of Carmela Harris. Yeah. And you mentioned to me that you heard it here first and uh, that is now the, uh, the first vice president of the U.S. I think it speaks to your knowledge. Um, you know, I think I heard in the opening remarks, uh, hopping pints. Is that correct, Rob? Hopping pints. So. Quaffing. Okay, quaffing. So that's, that, that's the word of the day for me. Uh, Doug, I personally hope we get the chance to quaff some pints sometime soon. But thank you on behalf of the club. Where the came from, quaffing pints. The red story is also very native. He's coming up to a sports celebrity dinner that the Rotary Club is putting on. He calls me at the, at the Queens to say, or I call him and, okay, Red, you've got to be here. And, you know, Holiday Inn and da 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 da. And he says, Yeah, all right, all right. He says, We're going to have a hell of a time. He says, What business do you have? I said, Well, I have the Queen's Hotel. The Queen's Hotel. Oh, thanks. Many a beer I quaffed in that joint. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the original quaff. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is apparent that Rob has missed our meetings because he had a lot to say today. <laughs> Thank you for that, Rob. Thank you for the kind words you said. And Doug, I think probably the toughest classification that's ever been presented to the club following the launch of somebody's personal Hall of Fame speech for the Ontario Political Hall of Fame. So well done today, Rob. But Doug, thank you very much for that. Um, and today's meeting, I'm going to share something personal with you. This title that I currently hold as president of the Rotary Club of Barry, one that I am so honored to have been chosen for, comes with this title of distresses, professionals, and speakers, and commanders. That's not in here. I'm sharing this with you because I've allowed these negative forces to affect me the last few weeks. I've been concentrating on the challenges and obstacles that we face. Technology and Zoomers, we lost you. Sorry, I think you're back. Uh, I've been concentrating on the challenges and obstacles that we face instead of appreciating the beautiful smiles, laughter, and friendship 
that sit here before me and stare so intently at me on Zoom. This quote is my thank you to the club for providing the strength and clarity that I have needed to recalibrate my thinking and focus, which is another way of saying to get your head out of your blank. Find a group of people who challenge and inspire you, spend a lot of time with them, and it will change your life. With nothing further, for the good of Rotary, I declare this meeting adjourned.